today's video is going to be another thrift store challenge, but this time the focus is going to be on the store, our house. So basically we're gonna go to our house, get loads of inspiration, and then we are headed over to the thrift store to see what we can come up with for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. One of my favorite things that I saw at our house was their organically shaped dinnerware. Everything just is imperfect and beautiful, but also very expensive. So when I went to the thrift store, I came across this beautiful set of dinnerware and it was all just $12 for 16 pieces. I loved the dusty blue color of this dinnerware as well as the rim had that shade of brown, just like the plates at our house. I also loved the beautiful etching, but most of all, I loved the organic shape of this set of plates and bowls. So I ended up stacking a few of these bowls on my open shelving in my kitchen, and then I'm also going to add a few of the plates to my countertop for some easy access, and I think you get that really high-end look on a budget. When I was shopping around at our house, I noticed that a lot of their metals had a lot of extra detail. It wasn't just this smooth surface. They had divots or they had like this hammered or honeycomb effect. And the last time I was at the thrift store, I came across this sweet little hammered brass bowl and I thought it would make a great little planter. I could put this in the kitchen, in the bathroom, on a nightstand. And I love pieces like that that can be so versatile and you can always switch up your florals depending on the season. But I think you get a very chic look on a budget. I would say out of all of the stores that we've been shopping around and getting inspiration from that our house's artwork definitely seemed to be the most versatile and eclectic. I think there is something for everybody, but definitely not for everyone's budget. So I do like to go to the thrift store and I usually like to just start by finding a frame that I really like. And I particularly love this frame, not necessarily because of the frame, but because of the color of the mat. And the original sketch on the inside was fine, but because this was gonna be going in my kitchen, I wanted to just kind of spruce it up a bit and add a little pop of color. So I I found those two watercolors for just 50 cents a piece and I'm just gonna place one of those on top of this sketch print inside of the mat and I think you can get a really similar look on a budget. Our house definitely did not have any shortages of glass vases and glass pitchers, and this is something that you can definitely find at your thrift store over time. So I ended up coming across this one for just $2. The tag at the top stated that it had been made in Italy. It feels like it's very good quality, but definitely on a budget. If you are somebody who has animals in your house and you're filling up waters all the time, this might be a nice option. It looks pretty sitting out and it's also very practical, but also you can use a pitcher as a vase. So I ended up just going to the grocery store, picking up this bunch of flowers, cutting each stem down to the appropriate size. I think this looks very chic, but so budget friendly. Talking briefly about some holiday decor, I touched on this in my last video about the deer statues and the deer busts for the holiday season, which I really appreciate. I like that style of decor for the holiday season. So when you're at the thrift store, typically you come across these like paper mache kind of cheapy looking deer statues. And I did end up finding a good quality deer statue. Now it did have a couple scratch marks and it was just a little bit too pigmented. So I did decide to mist over it with some champagne mist spray paint. And I was really happy with that find. But the last time I was at the Goodwill, I came across this iron metal deer and it was $15.99, which is generally more than I like to spend, but I love the fact that it was a candle holder, just like the one from our house. And I think it occupies a lot of space in a really beautiful way. When I was shopping around at our house, I noticed that the brass wasn't this like bright brass. It had some of this like patina as they call it, which is basically just like an oxidation or a chemical reaction that happens to metal over time. And it makes things feel really weathered and old and tells a story. So I came across these beautiful candle holders. They were super heavy and just a dollar a piece. So when it comes to mixing metals in your space, I think the trick is it just has to be evidently different. So I wouldn't ever put these two tones of brass together because they would clash. And in my office, as you guys know, I like to keep it feeling nice and moody. So I generally like to stick to this tone of brass instead. 
Speaking of aged brass, I came across this side table in person and I actually had DIY'd something like this in the past that I wanted to share with you guys again in case you missed it. So this was actually in an Ikea hacks video. I grabbed two saucers from Ikea in like the plant section and I had previously thrifted this super tall brass tapered candle holder for just a few dollars. And I'm just going to attach this all with several different types of glue. So I started off by doing some E6000 because that adhesive takes the longest to cure of the three that I'll be using. And then I used some super glue gel, applied a generous amount of that super glue gel, again, to give it a nice secure hold. And it starts to kind of cure after about like 10 minutes, I would say, and then I finished it off just to give it a little bit of that like instant hold with some Gorilla hot glue and I think that this combination works out really well you do have to leave it sit for at least 24 hours before touching it so that way everything cures and is solidified really well to each other I finished the bottom part of the table first before attaching the top and I just repeated all of those steps after the table was secured and solidified, I took it out to the garage to give it some coats of spray paint. So I actually used this one that I don't use that often, but I wanted to get the color correct. And this spray paint has sort of like a green undertone, which is kind of that green film that you get from patinaed brass. So I just gave it a once over with that tone of spray paint. And then I decided to add just some black metallic mist to further amplify and make it just feel a little bit more aged. The inspiration from our house costs well over $400 and this table just cost me about 20 bucks. I really love the textiles that our house carries. Something about it just feels traveled and it feels collected and it feels cozy. That's my favorite aspect of their textiles. So I ended up coming across, this is not even a dupe. These are legit our house throw pillows that I've shared with you guys in the past for $3 a piece. They match the tones in my home perfectly. I love the pattern and it is one of my favorite thrifted finds. When I was shopping around at our house, I kept noticing that they use a lot of this like bluish gray color in their decor. So they'll use it in their hurricane bases. Like I showed you in the beginning, they'll use it in their dinnerware. And I came across this hurricane base and it was $5 at the Goodwill. But one problem I have is a lot of times if I'm styling with a basket and I'm styling with a vase, they're the same height. So to kind of break that, I decided instead of using this as a candle holder, I'm going to use it as a vase and put some faux magnolia stems inside instead. If you guys have been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I absolutely love to decorate with natural materials. I saw these tea light candle holders made of stone and I thought they were so beautiful. But then when I was at the thrift store, I came across this candle holder for just $2. It was actually larger in scale and meant for a candle that was bigger. So I thought that that was an amazing find. I absolutely love it. I think styled on a dresser in a bathroom makes a very high-end look, but definitely on a budget. Another natural stone I noticed they were using a lot of was marble, but the marble just felt a lot more organic and not so high contrast that you would see at like a Crate and Barrel or a CB2. And how many times have you seen, myself included, take a bowl from the thrift store and turn it into a pendant light or a sconce of some kind? And I thought, why can't we do it the opposite way? Let's try now taking a pendant shade and making that into a decorative bowl accent instead. So I did decide to put a small wooden bowl at the base of this one and styling it just like they did with some pine cones and some beautiful ornaments. And our house definitely had a lot of beautiful options for ornaments, but they were really expensive. And you can almost always find just bags of leftover ornaments that people have outgrown or maybe they're just not really interested in using anymore. And I always like to sift through because even though this bag of ornaments was $8. There was probably about 20 different ornaments in this entire bag. I probably only ended up keeping half of the ornaments, but this whole bag of 20 ornaments still costs less than one ornament from our house. Whenever I'm shopping for baskets at a high-end store, I do like to kind of pay attention to a few things. Obviously, a big part of that cost is the scale. Usually the baskets are much larger than things you would find at the thrift store, but every now and then you can come across a large scale basket in the right shape and in the right color tone that looks really similar to things that you would find at a high-end store. For example, I found this basket for $5 at the Goodwill. Now I know why they donated it. There was like some staining on the outside of the liner. The liner had been damaged, but the basket 
basket itself was still in really good condition, brand new with tags. So I decided I was just gonna remove the liner because I didn't really need it anyway. Baskets are just great for storage, obviously, but also for decorative purposes. They add such a beautiful, rich texture to whatever space you are designing. And finally, we're gonna talk about some pottery options available. So I would say our house had the most eclectic style of all. They had these really like modern pottery pieces and then they had sort of more like vintage -y inspired pieces. So I really feel like there was something for everybody, but that is one thing I will always buy at the thrift store because you can find really beautiful, really unique pieces for such an affordable price point. I love this brown one. I ended up taking it home and styling it in my office. And then on a fresh cart, I found this beautiful crock for just $2. I loved that it had some damage. I know that might sound crazy, but I feel like it just tells a story and just makes your space feel really like collected. But then to kind of offset that vintage and antique look, I like to throw in something that's like hyper modern. So I found that disco ball for a dollar in the stuffed animal section, and I love it for the new year and for the holidays. And I think it's just fun to try mixing styles and materials together. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thank you to all of you who've reached out sharing your condolences with me. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know how special Ollie was and will continue to be in my life. And I just appreciate all of your guys' patience and support with me during this time. And on a lighter note, if there is any other stories you guys would like to see me do this style of a video too, please leave me a comment down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.